Hello dear viewers, the title of today's lecture is Regional Diversity in India. We will try to discuss this topic focusing on the thirst area of regional diversity. First of all, let us split the phrase into two parts. The term region means an area and the term regional can be understood through the synonyms like territorial, spatial, geographical, topographical, topical, local, provincial, sectional and the like. On the other hand, the term diversity implies differences, variations, mixture, range, multiplicity, distinctiveness, divergence, heterogeneity, dissimilarity, multiformity and the like. Hence, regional diversity implies the differences and dissimilarities the people, the regions and communities of India feature. India is a well known and also respected in the world for its diversity which is very exclusive in nature. India is a big nation having 29 states and 7 union territories. The geographical division of the states and UTs clearly depict extreme differences. States like Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra hold a big portion of land of India. On the other hand, the states like Kerala, Meghalaya, Mizoram and the like hold a small portion of land. However, this geographical typology is also ardently featured with differential topographical, demographic, linguistic, religious, environmental and cultural differences. It is judicially not possible to discuss all these factors of regional diversity in details in one lecture, but we will still try to have an academic glimpses of all these in following parts of the lecture. We will take up variables and contents focusing on religion and language. To understand the regional diversity in details, it is important that we talk about maximum possible variables like language, religion, culture, demography, environment, etc. The term religious diversity, it implies multiple religions dwelling together in a territory. Further, table 1 shows all India religion census data 2011. The data depicts that Hindus are a religious majority with 79.80 percentage of population followed by Islam 14.23 percent, Christianity 2.30 percent and Sikhism 1.72 percent, Buddhism 0.70 percent, Jainism 0.37 percent and other religions constitute 0.66 percent of the total population of the nation. Religious diversity is well seen through these figures. Data shows that so many religions of the world are living in same nation for not decades but centuries. Religious diversity does not only employ people of different religions living together. It also includes practices like sharing common or similar festivity or adopting it from other religious communities, observing holidays on other religions days, visiting other religions places letting other religious communities relish their own religious freedom without dominating them with the dominance own and the like. Caste is one of the most apt examples of religious diversity in India. Caste system, along with its allied practices and trends, is not confined to Hindus only. There are other religions which practice caste system as a commonality between them, but with different normative patterns and nomenclature. Caste under each religion, whichever practices it, functions with distinct rules and social prohibitions. These sanctions and prohibitions are more often reflected in their decisions regarding marital choices like endogamy, exogamy and the like consequent to their rules regarding adoption and inheritance of the family property etc. India is a place where religious diversity has not only been inculcated by social and historical factors, rather also supported and assisted by the legal factors too. There is a Hindu Marriage Act 1955 which deals with Hindu marriage taking in its ambit Buddhist, Sikhs, Jains, Arya and Brahmo Samaj. India also has Special Marriage Act 1954 which covers in its ambit persons belonging to different religions marrying each other without changing their own religions. 
Such legislations make religious diversity more evident and facilitated too. Indian legal systems have fully endorsed the constitutional value of secularism by designing the law in such a way that all the religions dwelling on the land get platform of equity and equality to exist. Part 3 of the Indian constitution includes fundamental rights which are given to all citizens and which are enforceable too. Supporting the spirit of welfare and good of all the citizens, the directive principles of state policies, the stringent guidelines for governance have been incorporated in part 4 of the Indian constitution. Although these guidelines are not enforceable, but are strongly referred to and adopted while doing legislative administration of the nation. But in case of any conflict between the two, that is between fundamental rights and directive principles of state policies, the former one prevails due to their enforceability. Religious diversity has often been in discussion encapsulated by these two parts of grand legal book of the nation. Some crucially connected fundamental rights are Article 14, giving right to equality and endorsing equal protection of law and equality before law. Article 25, giving freedom of conscience and free profession, practice and propagation of religion. Article 26, giving freedom of managing religious affairs. Article 27, giving freedom as to payment of taxes for promotion of any particular religion. Article 28, giving freedom as to attendance at religious instruction or religious worship in certain educational institutions. These rights in letter and in spirit both radically support and nurture the theme of religious diversity in India. Article 44 under Directive Principles of State Policy says that the state shall endeavor to secure for its citizen a uniform civil code throughout the territory of the nation. India is well known in the world for its religious features which mark its national character very predominantly. Whenever discussions on international forums take place regarding India's social structure, its religious plurality is surely referred to. So we will now focus on languages of India. Next content, we will specify our present talk is on language. Language is one of the most potential modes of communication between human beings. Language is a distinct way combining or using words, signs or body language to convey the intended message. The soul of any communication is the intended message. The message can be well conveyed and understood only if the language shared by two or more parties involved in the communication or talk share a common language. Since body language or signs cannot convey everything intended to be conveyed. According to the census of India 2011, India has in all 22 major languages and 234 identifiable mother languages. The journal note written in the census of India 2011 states that language is a crucial attribute in a plurilingual and pluriethnic nation like India and the mother tongue is the language spoken to a person by the person's mother during his or her childhood. The Indian constitution initially recognized 18 languages in the country, in addition to which four more those are Bodo, Dogri, Santali and Mithali were added in 2003 through 100th amendment of Indian constitution. We need to add that there are estimated to be 554 dialects in India. Out of the total population, 96.56 percent has or we may say use one of the scheduled language and the remaining 3.44 percent use other languages. Language has also become the source of linguism in India. Linguism is a situation whereby language makes people united not only with their speech but also with their identity. There are some very prompting factors behind development of linguism. These factors perform so evident that the linguistic groups become linguistic minorities and majorities thereon, influencing and affecting the whole realm of governance in the state. Availability of the literature is a strong impetus to the linguistic communities. It acts as a source of influencing people of same linguistic groups or even from other groups. This influence 
can on one side promote and excel the aesthetic aspect of the language and on the other hand an adverse side it also works for ethnocentric objective. Literature, its durability, its application, its historicity and its accessibility along with its reach determine empowerment of the linguistic groups which owns it. This language based loyalty acts as a deterrent to acceptance of a common language, hence hampers individualistic or group level growth also. At times, geographical cause club with that of linguistic factors making linguistic tendencies even more stringent. For instance, some states as a matter of chance are inhabited by majority of people using or practicing common language. This regional impetus makes linguistic principles more established, making ethnic reactions strong and more ardent. Bombay, now officially named as Mumbai, is one of the examples of such amalgamations. A majority of people speak Marathi and inhibit same state making a prominent ethnic cum linguistic community. While talking about the factors being linguism, political interventions and political commercialization of the language cannot be ignored. Language and more focusing linguistic communities are used as a vote bank by the political parties and are made even stronger. Political parties contesting each other fund the linguistic communities and support them in all their fair as well as unfair battles. Falling under linguism, people connect to each other through the community using same language and also disconnect to other communities using different languages. India has also faced turmoils in the name of language whereby many states have experienced linguistic rights. Some instances are Telangana movement demanding a separate state of people speaking Telugu language. Other is Marathi nationalism which has often led to writing in Mumbai for ethno-linguistic reasons. The anti-Hindi agitations of Tamil Nadu, Assam's linguistic rights and the like. Amidst all functional as well as dysfunctional aspects of language and linguistic communities, still it cannot be ruled out that India's regional diversity is largely based on language as a major factor. Now we will discuss variables and contents focusing on culture and geography. Culture is another variable of regional diversity in India. Culture consists of patterns of living including ideas, arts, behaviors, beliefs, values, symbols and all such manifestations. It covers living styles like dance, folklore, festivity, cuisines, dress culture and the like. India does not have a single culture. It is a multicultural nation where uncountable cultural groups dwell together in one land. Almost all the states of India have their own dances, have their own folk songs, have their own special food and cuisines, typical traditional dress culture, linguistic culture including their own language based on movies and telefilms, a typical historicity and the like. India being a multicultural nation attracts tourism to remarkable extent. People from all over the world visit various states of India on various occasions and festivals to see the typical celebrations being done thereon in different states. Sociologically saying, India is not only a recipient of western ideology and lifestyles, rather it is a source of Easternization too. Today, Indian dresses, Indian culture, Indian food culture, Indian theatre, movies are leaving a large and irrevocable impacts on western and other part of the world too. The process of immigration and migration, international tourism, modernization and advancement of technological means of communication, internationalization of Indian products and services are some of those factors which have led to promotion of diversity of Indian culture and have also given impetus to easternization. Foreign researchers come and undertake their research on social, legal, political, psychological aspects of Indian society. The academic ventures are resulting into creation of world-renowned theories. India is undertaking international students 
and faculty exchange programs inducing big scope of international application of its education system. The biggest factor behind these positive development is the India's cultural diversity, giving ample space to people from all over the world to come over and explore. India's cultural diversity makes India the most adaptive and the most adjusting nation of the world. All this is happening because of the cultural diversity India possesses which no other nation possesses up to the same extent and thickness as India does. Indian cultural diversity attracts large number of tourists to India which further is a big source of revenue for Indian government also. According to the Ministry of Tourism, Government of India, maximum tourists from foreign countries arrive in India in the months of October to March every year as these months are featured with festivity in almost all the states. Figure shows the Indian tourist arrivals from July 2015 to June 2016. The data clearly shows that tourism is on higher side in the months stated by Ministry of Tourism, Government of India. This further makes it endorsed that the major attraction for tourists is the cultural diversity of India which is most manifested in these months of higher tourism rates. Now we will touch geography as a content. India's distinct and diverse geography is a crucial variable to be referred to in this discussion. The reason is that the geographical variations the Indian states reflect are one of the most important components of regional and cultural diversity of India. Each state has peculiar and typical geography. India cradles between heights of Himalayas and plains of south. Different regions in India are differently geographically featured. These are massive deltas, high altitude deserts, hot deserts, tropical forests and the like. India has very interesting and fact-finding physical, human and environmental geography as well. Some states have extreme summers, whereas some do not ever see scorching summers. Some have extreme cold weathers all through and almost all the years. These geographical variations make each state possess different culture than the others, making cultural diversity more prominent through regional diversity. Not only the states of India have a different physical or human geography, they also feature distinct political, historical and social geography, distinct zoogeography and economic geography too. Differential consumerism traits in different states depending upon different season show how far geographical diversity influences the nation's structure. Now we will discuss allied components of regional diversity. Religion, culture, language and geography are the basic pillars on which the concept of regional diversity in India stands. There are other components of regional diversity too as mentioned in the preceding part of this lecture. For example, environment, political variations, demography and the like. As far as environment is concerned, it is not only a source of regional diversity in India but also an impact too. The term environment reflects a global phenomena and a global concern. All the parts of the world are equally dependent, connected, reliant and inquisitive about the environmental resources and the related issues. The relationship between environment and society has been understood in different ways by different scholars. Realists believe that the threats posed to environment by the way of our living and the way we have organized our social order dominates our understanding of environmental problems. They believe that we can ill afford to ignore the material truths of environmental problems and their ecological consequences. On the other hand, constructionists emphasize that the social life influences how we conceptualize the problems. They focus on the ideological origin of the environmental problems and the definitions of the problems as well as non-problems. The realist constructionist debate is over the material and idealist exploration of social life and environmental issues also. Ideology, material and developmental process, all these three factors do not play same in all the regions of a single nation. They have a different role, different application 
and of course a different consequential scenario. India's environment has as many faces as the number of its states therein. All states possess different kinds of climatic conditions and temperatures influencing the social, economic, psychological and political life of the people. In some states, abrupt or gradual climatic changes have resulted into increasing rates of suicide, referring to decline in agricultural productivity. And on the other hand, in other states, its climate is the greatest source of income in the name of tourism and foreign investments. In such a case, it becomes very difficult to cope with these changes in terms of finance and socio-cultural abilities. Anyhow, having shortage of time, we cannot discuss the environmental issues in detail, but still, it cannot be ignored that environment is one of the crucial components to discuss regional diversity in India. As far as demography is concerned, it again makes India popular in international news channels and also in social media world over. Literacy rates, sex ratio, percentage of dependent persons, persons having household amenities, persons belonging to different castes and the like are such factors which very ardently present the regional diversity of India. In conclusion, it can be said that India is such a nation of this universe which has distinct features. It is very diverse in terms of social, cultural, regional, religious, political, economic and environmental as well as psychological factors. India's regional diversity has been well explored by researchers and also by governmental organizations, but still the potential behind this diversity is yet hidden. The regional arts and skills, the regional handicraft, the regional environmental capacities have still not been brought to the optimum use, rather in some cases they have not been surfaced even due to regional distress or regional violence. There is a need of bulk of administrative efforts to be made in order to make India's regional diversity claim its excellence on global scales. It was nice sharing knowledge with you all dear viewers, have a very nice day.